Welcome to 15 Minute Theatre, the only review show that squeezes a whole production into 900 seconds. The date is the 7th of February 2018, and we've just been to see Young Frankenstein. Open the house. Hi James. How are you? I'm alright, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well today, thanks. Good. Just today, only today. But only today, but you know, oh, who knows what tomorrow will bring. Hopefully it'll also be well tomorrow. I'm hoping so. Okay, so uh, we've just been seeing Young Frankenstein at the Garrick Theatre. Indeedy. Um, I'll give you a little fat file about it if I may. Oh, alright. Okay, it was adapted from the film by Mel Brooks. Yeah. Um, directed by Susan Stoban. Written yep. by Mel Brooks and Thomas Meehan. And notable actors, Hadley Frazier played Dr. Frankenstein. Leslie Joseph, Frau Blucher. Ross Noble was Igor, Igor, yep. Igor. And Summer Stralen. Stralen. Sorry, Stralen. <laughs> was Inga. Yeah. Was at the Garrick and it's running until September 2018. I, yeah, if you say so. It is. <laughs> okay. So, do you want to give us a synopsis? Yeah, okay. Um, I feel that you don't really put feel the synopsis. You seem always reluctant when I ask well, you to do it. Well, because I feel like it's a lot of pressure. Well, I think it's good for you to have a bit of pressure. I have pressure all the time. Um, it's basically the Frankenstein story, but with a Mel Brooks twist. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know the Frankenstein story, it is about bringing a dead person to life who then becomes who is a, a monster and and that's it <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> you've outdone yourself do you this know, week do you care to elaborate on it no I think that'll do it's, um, like I said it's a Mel, it's a Mel Brooks film yeah, uh, turned it, into a musical basically it's ba- yeah it's basically it's based on the film um, and if you've seen the film that is the synopsis yeah, absolutely right so first impressions um, what do you think well I felt well I didn't I, I start off I, I couldn't really warm to it I felt like it was a cross between a pantomime and a carry on film <laughs> you know <laughs> it's all I've been thinking all the way home yeah. panto carry on film very likeable yeah. but the set was very panto the, the performances were better than panto yeah but I warmed to it as yeah. it went along I, at first I was like considering that there's been a lot of stuff about feminism recently. It is a very, very unfeminist <laughs> production. There's a lot of boobs. It's very, it's very sort of Babs Windsor. A very picture postcard, isn't it? Yeah. It, it feels a little bit dated. The humour feels a bit dated. Yeah. To me. And I think. I think if people are a big fan... I've seen the film. You haven't seen the film, have you? Or you can't remember... I've seen bits of it. I haven't seen it the whole way through. Okay. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I I think if people love the film, then they'll just love this because it's taken all the best bits of the film and it's expanded on it. If you don't know the film, then yeah, I think you're very much in danger of having quite a few dated jokes and predictable humour, all in good taste. But I always feel it's quite hard for actors taking on a role that Gene Wilder has done as well. Yeah. Because he's such a unique character actor. I think it's very, very difficult for anyone to try and emulate him or better his performances. So we're talking about Hadley Fraser here, who played Dr. Frankenstein. He was good. I, mean, I they, thought it was all right. They did try and make him look like Gene Wilder. He had the same colour hair and it was a bit curly, a bit curly, wasn't it? Yeah, and I think that's one of the dangers of this type of theatre. If you, you know... You're going to, a bit like when we went to The Exorcist, yeah. you're going to see a well made, well known film, and basically they're trying to recapture that film on the stage, and I don't see the point. They should just kind of go completely the other way if they can. Yeah, but I do think this was better than The Exorcist. Oh, yeah, it was better than yeah. The Exorcist. I mean, it was good, it was, it was a very professional cast. There were some, I did laugh out loud, there were some good jokes in it, but I didn't laugh out, I only laughed out loud twice. Okay. But there was a lot of people were laughing, weren't there? Yeah, the but again, I think a lot of people who have gone to see it are people who are big fans of the film. Yeah. Because when they did the big, you know, the big finale, the, um, 
people were cheering at you know the 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 line you know yeah but i laughed at the in the big finale yeah but you weren't cheering at it well no but they were all drunk (laughs) (laughs) should we talk a little bit about leslie joseph yeah that bird of a feather who played for abucha or blucha or whatever yeah yeah what do you think of her um I thought she was good. I don't think she was outstanding, but I thought she was good. She had a good stage presence. Very solid performance. Yeah. She... I did actually see her in Panto once. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not thinking of her. I'm thinking of Anita Dobson. <laughs> 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 They're not the same person. They are not. <laughs> uh, strike that from the record. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I liked her. I thought she was good. And, yeah, I, she was and my fun. eyes were drawn to oh, oh, sorry. My eyes were drawn to her when... Um, my eyes were drawn to her when she came onto the stage. Yeah. She was very entertaining. Yeah. And what what about um, Ross Noble as Igor? I thought it was a bit over the top. But again, but it, but thinking about it, it, that is quite Mel Brooks, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, he, out of all the characters, was probably the most like the one for the film. Yeah. And he hammed it up. But I, again, I thought it was good. Yeah. And like when they did the songs and the numbers, it was quite entertaining. Yeah, yeah. No, it was. And there was, I mean, the numbers were very short. Yeah. Was it, are you saying that's a blessing? Well, yeah. <laughs> After the divide, shortness is something that we're really into. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it whizzed by to do it was two, yeah. two hours and 20 minutes. And, and some were better than others. And there were some funny moments, and I laughed yeah, there were. out loud a bit. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I think it's a jolly romp. Yeah. And I, it, it, I, I think, as I said, it's difficult that in the... It, it, it's so unfeminist. It's so old. But then I guess what Mel Brooks was doing, he was parodying those horror films that were like that. Yeah. So that's purposeful that he's done Well, that. it is, but the problem is, he was parodying films 40 years on from the films. Yeah. We're now 40 years on from that. Yeah. So it's 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 tough. Um, what did you think about the staging? Um, I thought the staging was was pretty good. Some of the backdrops were a bit rope. There was a lot of backdrops, wasn't there? It was very, again, it was very panto. You'd have a backdrop and then yeah. you'd fly in a bit of set. But then that, again, is probably part of the... Par- he's parodying the, por- the the rubbishness of those old horror films. Yeah, probably. So that is part Although of Although I thing. would like to say for the record, those old horror films were not rubbish. I, yeah, but I watched you know, five sci-fi black and white films. Yeah, on but the if weekend, you're thinking of like brilliant. Hammer horrors and things like that, you know, yeah. the sets were quite clearly made out of plasticine and straws. Yeah, fair enough. They probably, probably didn't have plasticine in those days, <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> they, were, they were definitely made around. on Blue Peter. <laughs> so, um, any standout moments for you? Um, I liked the putting on the Ritz song. Oh, Ritz. Yeah. Is that a spoiler? Not if you've seen the film. Well, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think it's really a spoiler. Yeah. People uh, won't like know what that. I'm talking about. What? That from that line, if they don't know the film, they won't know what I'm okay, talking fine. about. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I like that. That was the first bit I laughed in. Yeah. And there was another bit. When else did I laugh? Do you remember when I laughed? Did you know yes. No, you were too really. engrossed. <laughs> <laughs> Riveted. Okay. What were your standout moments? <sighs> well... I was quite excited about the creature coming alive because that's always a big moment, but it wasn't yeah. really a stand-up moment. I liked the bit on the hayride when there yeah, were, that was good. yeah, I thought that was quite nicely done. Yeah. Um, and I did like the big number um, at the end. Um, <sighs> apart from that, you know, <sighs> it was fun. look. It's fun. It was like popcorn. It was. It's fun. It's a fun show. Yeah. It's got some good. It's got a good cast. It's got people that I'd heard of in it. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is not always a, a good thing, but I, f- I felt like it was strong, it's fun, it's better than The Exorcist. <laughs> and do you know what? Actually having people I recognised made that slightly better this time. Because I think having Leslie Joseph and Ross Noble and people kind of carried it for me a little bit. Ross Noble was good, and Leslie Joseph was good. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, should we take a break and we'll come back and do the story? Yeah, let's take a massive break. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just sit here for a couple of minutes and then come back. <laughs> so we're back after our massive break. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm holding up. Thanks. Good stuff. All right, so we've got our new feature. Oh, what is this new feature? Right, it's called Creature Comforts or the, 
No, it's still called Creature Comforts. Okay. All right, so you've got to bear with me. All right. All right. A, new, a feature in progress. A feature in progress, so we might need a bit of refining. Yeah. But what we're going to kind of do is talk quickly through things about the auditorium. So, yeah. ushers. Anyone? Uh, did we have any problems with the ushers? I didn't. They were all quite nice. They were fine. I didn't really... I, I, I neither cared for them nor cared not for them. Okay, what about the seats? Right. Width-wise, okay... Leg room wise, pretty awful. Yeah, we were I packed in. I actually felt really claustrophobic. Yeah. Um. So yeah, not happy with the seats. No, I mean I wasn't uncomfortable, but it was short, so that yeah, was all right. they were wide enough. <laughs> yeah, and they weren't really uncomfortable seats. It was just purely leg room. Yeah, and I'm only wee, so yeah, it was it was tiny. The yeah. woman in front kept looking behind her. I'm sure she, she my knees were in her head. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing I could do about that. Tan, let's go on to the audience. Yeah. Oh, God, there was this guy in front of me who yeah. leaned forward the entire time. So all I got was his huge head in the middle of the yeah. stage. That really annoyed me. I feel like rating the audience is... I know I complain about the audience quite a lot. We're not going to rate them, we're just talking okay. about them. And we have quite a rowdy bunch next to us. Yeah, I didn't mind that, though. They, I think they had... They were all right, Yeah, they? they were fine. And what, what do you think of the, uh, the auditorium itself? Well, from where we... I'd, our seating wasn't very good. We couldn't see a bit of the stage... So that yeah. was a bit rubbish. That's because um, we the cheap seats. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, was, it was quite nice. It was a lot of gold, I liked it. A lot of gold leaf. It was a gold. Which I always think denotes quality. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. All right, so we're not going to score this, but okay. I have made a comfort colour chart, oh. which really works well on podcasts, Our listeners obviously. are going to love this. <laughs> but it goes from a very light colour, white. Yeah. To a very dark colour, black. And okay. I know neither white or black are colours, so, so please don't make me really yeah. write in and say that. So what I'm There are to... other colours in between. Yeah. We've got um, a green, a blue, the Green's kind of middle. Yellow. There's many colours there. So out of comfort, what, what would you give it? Dark Which... being the worst. Um... See, I'm tempted to go around this kind of area. That, James is indicating a brown. I've, this is really going to take off, isn't it? I can sense it. <laughs> I'd also go for the brown, so dreary we're give it a brown, brown, which is like third from the worst. Yeah. So we're going to give it a brown comfort colour rating. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know what this means. <laughs> well, it, well, that's just what it means. So the okay. guy gets a brown rating from us. I mean, it doesn't sound good, does it? No. What we what what we're looking for is white, yellow, orange. Really, that's what if you're a theatre, that's what you want. Yeah. What you don't want is a brown, grey or a black. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure this sits right with me. <laughs> well, you're the one that wanted to stop the water feature. Yeah, I'm just not sure that a, co- a colour chart and a podcast is the best way to go. <laughs> we'll try it. It's going to be Let's amazing. see if anyone's got any comments on the <laughs> colour chart. Please let us know. You can say, oh, yeah. Right. Okay, let's get on to the scores. Okay. All right. I think you should go first this week. Oh, damn it. Okay, performances. I think actually generally were pretty strong. I think, as I said, it was really panto, but yeah. I think that's the way it was directed. So I feel like I can't judge the actors for that. Yeah. So I'm going to go for an eight. Okay. I thought the performances were strong. I enjoyed the leads. Yeah. Uh, none of them bothered me, and it... none of them bothered me. <laughs> Some of them didn't. Going to this play, none of it bothered me. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it an eight point five. Oh, eight point five. Yeah. Boom. Okay, staging and technical. Right, well, I liked the snappiness of what it... It was very colourful. It was very colourful. They had some though. good pyrotechnics. They did have yeah, good pyrotechnics. Yeah, pyrotechnics were very good. Yeah, I'm going to give it 7.5. Uh, I'm going to go for 7. Okay. Is that well, it? <laughs> well, the thing is about it is... I mean, I don't think it was... The set was the most amazing, but I think that was part of the plan and the parody. Yeah. So maybe I'm marking it down on a little unfairly, but that's what I'm going to give it. Fair enough. It was better than the divide. Okay. <laughs> and what about um, narrative, plot, and music? The songs were pretty jolly. Yeah. Um, the narrative was the same as the film. Yeah. Um, plot, same as the film. Um, yeah, I'm going to go 7.5. Okay. 
All right. Um, for all the same reasons that you've said, um, I'm just going to mark it slightly lower. I'm going to give it a seven. Oh. I think seven's a good rating. And then he went for a seven. Yeah. Um, originality. Okay, well, it was taken straight from the film. Yeah. So I have to mark it down for that, unfortunately, so I'm going to give it a six. Although there was an extra 20 minutes that wasn't in the film at the end. Was there? Yeah. So the film ends with the big showstopper that we saw. Right. Um, and then all the... The bit after that is all kind of new, I think. Okay. Unless I've forgotten the film completely. Oh, well, I wouldn't know. Anyway, what do you think? I'm going to give it um, a seven again. Okay, did I tell you? I was going to give it mine a six. Yeah, you did. Great. Thanks for reiterating <laughs> that, though. <laughs> and finally, was it worth it? Um, yes. <laughs> yes. I wouldn't go and see it again. No. No, I wouldn't. But if somebody was like, oh, I want to go and see something entertaining, I'd say... Go and see Young Frankenstein, don't go and see The Divide. That's what I'd say. I'd tell my nieces to see it. Yeah, I would. They'd enjoy it. Yeah, I think it's a fun thing. I'm going to go for a 7.5. Good stuff. And I'm going to give it a 7, um, which I think is a fair score. Yeah. All right. Okay, so I'm going to work out the scores, Vicky, if you'd like to tell the listener what we're going to see next. Do you know what? I can't actually remember what we're going to see. No, no, can I? I knew that would happen. I could look in my calendar. Yeah, go on. But I may need to do some like bumbling around. We are going to see. We are going to see Fanny and Alexander. So we're not going to see anything next week. We're going to see Fanny and Alexander the week after next at the Trendy Old Vic. So that'll be a nice. Strong play for us, wouldn't it? Well, hopefully. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, me too. All right, well, thanks for that, Vicky. You're welcome. Sorry it took so long. There was absolutely the right amount of time. Okay, so I've tied up the scores, and I can tell you that it's going to get a star rating of 3.7. That's pretty good, actually. It's not bad. Where does that place it? It places it just below The Exorcist. Oh, and I think it's better than The Exorcist. Well... Not by the ratings, you don't. Oh, why did we rate that so highly? It's hardly... I don't think it's very high. It's still, like, to train at the bottom. It puts it above Showstoppers, which is a good show, and so yeah. below the end of this. I think that's pretty fair. I think it should be above the three things that were above it. <laughs> well, there's nothing we can do about that. I feel that. like I was a bit harsh. I, felt... I feel like I'm getting more harsh with my scores, actually. Well... Well, we are, we, we are going to wipe the scoreboard at Christmas. The next Christmas, well, 2018. Not, this, not the Christmas that's gone. Gosh. No, Christmas, two th- yeah, 2018. We are, that's the year so, we're yeah. in. <laughs> so it'll be wiped, but until then... OK. Um, it means that the ferryman continues to be way up at the top. Well, it was excellent. Um, so there we go. OK, good work. Did you hear that? It what? You heard it. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, it's a theatre. Belvic... Do you know what it means we're out of time? Oh, dear. So, the curtain's down, the theatre's dark, and that was 15-minute theatre. Good night. Good night. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? <laughs> Different types who wear a day coat, pants with stripes or cutaway coat, perfect fits. Dressed up like a million dollar trooper Trying mighty hard to look like Gary Cooper Cooper, Cooper! Come let's mix where Rockefellers walk with sticks Or umbrellas in their midst If you're brave enough to have your theatre production reviewed Please contact us at 15minutetheatre at gmail.com Find us on Twitter and please rate and review us on iTunes. Thanks for listening.